eight souls in the ark. They were Noah, a pure Sethite, and Mrs. Noah, and Shem, Ham, Japheth, and their wives. Was there any pure descendant of Cain in the ark? Was there any seed of the serpent carried over the flood? How did the serpentine nature get over the flood? And who carried it? Since Noah was a pure Sethite it only remains for the other seven members to be identified. Although the pure Sethites may be led to partake of the Caic lifestyle, they did not possess in their blood the genes of the devil-possessed serpent. It is clear from Genesis chapter 9 verse 19 that every person born on this earth can be traced to one of the three sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. These are the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth overspread. Noah and his wife did not have any more son or daughter. The scriptures do not lie, Noah had only Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Hence, there was not a single pure Kenite or seed of the serpent in the ark. See Appendix 5. In Genesis chapter 9 verses 20 to 24 it is recorded that Ham committed incest with his mother, Mrs. Noah. This act was committed when Noah was drunk and lying naked in his tent. Both Ham and Mrs. Noah were guilty of a perverted sexual act. Note, to you who do not understand the terms, uncovered, and, the nakedness of his father, I suggest that you study Leviticus chapters 18 and 20. The chapters deal with laws forbidding acts of immorality and the penalties for those who committed any such acts. According to Leviticus chapter 18 verse 8 in 2011, a man who lay with his father's wife had uncovered his father's nakedness. Read also Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 30 and 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 1. See Appendix 6. Thus, we see that both parties manifested the wrong spirit, a trait that could only come from the devil himself through the serpent. Therefore Mrs. Noah was obviously a Kenite or a hybrid. Certain Jewish writings state that she was a Kenite. Also, in the genealogy of Cain's descendants, a woman by the name of Nama was mentioned, Genesis chapter 4 verse 22. In the record of genealogy, women were not mentioned unless they played a part in the history of the people. Was Nama the wife of Noah? And since she was Ham's mother, Ham without controversy must have inherited the genetic traits of the serpent from her. However, Ham was not a serpent seed as he was not a Kenite but a half-breed Sethite. Likewise, his two brothers, Shem and Japheth, also possessed the serpentine traits. So, we have the righteous Noah, of Seth's lineage, and his Caic or hybrid wife who gave birth to three sons of mixed blood. The sons, in turn, most probably married Caic women or women of mixed blood because, during their time, the earth was heavily populated by people of mixed race who filled the earth with wickedness, evil, and violence. Genesis chapter 6 verses 1 to 13. Remember the Caic women, daughters of men, were fair, that is, sexy and seductive, perhaps like modern-day Jezebels. With such conditions prevailing, the true sons of God, Sethites must have been watered down to nothing. Note, some Christians believe that Noah was also a mixed seed because he became drunk after the flood. No, Noah was a pure Sethite. His drunkenness did not prove otherwise. Drunkenness is not an evil trait nor is it inherited. It was never considered a sin in the Old Testament time but only a curse, Esau.5, 22-23, Prov.23, 19-21. In the New Testament age, under grace, Paul hit out at excessive wine drinking and warned that drunkards could not inherit the kingdom of God because, as saints of God, our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit. Excessive alcohol when taken into the body, not only numb the senses, but gradually destroy certain tissues of the body. Read Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18. 1 Timothy chapter 3 verses 3, 8, Galatians chapter 5 verses 16 to 26 and 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 9 to 20. No's indulgence in excessive wine drinking came upon him most probably as a result of the influence of the mixed populace of his generation before the flood. He must have acquired the art of wine making and drinking then. You must remember that the people of Adam were simple people, mainly keepers of animals, and those of the serpent were not only tillers of the ground but also great achievers in many fields of science because of their imaginative and inventive minds. Noah became a husbandman, tilled the ground and planted a vineyard only after the flood, General 920. If Noah was a mixed seed then his mother was either a Caic woman or one who was a mixed seed. But the genealogy of the Adamic firstborn did not end with his father, Lamech. Read Genesis chapter 5, it ended with Noah who was mentioned with his three sons together, rather than with Japheth his firstborn alone. Also, Japheth is placed last among the three sons. Thus, the last of the pure righteous firstborn was Noah. See Appendix 7. Examine the genealogy of Cain in Genesis chapter 4 verses 16 to 22 and you can see that the last of the pure serpent firstborn was Lamech. Lamech had three sons and a daughter by his two wives, Adah and Zillah. Jabal was the firstborn of Lamech, and he was the father of such as dwell in tents, and of such as have cattle. Verse 20. This verse leads us to understand that Adah could only be a Sethite as evidenced by the lifestyle of Jabal. Jabal's dominant Sethic characteristics could only have come from her. In contrast, Adah's second son, Jubal, inherited a dominant cake nature for he was the father of all such as handled the harp and organ, General 421. The three sons of Caic Lamech were of the same generation as Sethic Enoch whom God had raised up to prophesy against that wicked and evil generation of the two peoples when they began to intermarry. 
All the pure righteous firstborn of Adam's blood had to pass away from the wicked world before God's judgment was poured out because God does not treat the righteous and the wicked alike. General 1823-25, PSA.1, 5-6. Methuselah was the oldest and the last pre-flood patriarch to die. Though he was a pure righteous firstborn, Noah had to go through the tribulation of the flood because he was unequally yoked in marriage with a woman of the world, so to speak. However, he found grace in the eyes of God, General 6 to 8, 9, to survive the flood with his family. Noah types the foolish virgins who have to ride the wave of the great tribulation period that is soon to come. Conclusion In God's original plan, Adam and Eve were supposed to produce sons and daughters of God unto God, cf. Gen.1, 26-28, 2, 21-24. However, Satan sent the serpent to seduce Eve and perverted the bloodstream by injecting his evil traits into the serpent's seed which fused with Eve's egg, ovum, and produced Cain, who was his son, vicariously. Cain bore the full spiritual characteristics of Satan and the animalistic, sensual, fleshly, characteristics of the serpent. See Appendix 8. Thus, two bloodlines, that of Cain and Seth who replaced Abel, Seth means substitute, were then presented. These two bloodlines were distinct up to the period before the flood. Noah was the last of the firstborn of Seth's lineage. His wife was either a Kenite or a hybrid. She bore him three sons, Japheth, Ham and Shem. And these were the three sons of Noah and of them was the whole earth overspread, General 919. What was therefore the original sin? It was Satan who possessed the serpent who planted his seed in Eve by sexual fornication with her. It was by this means that Satan injected his evil and sinful traits into the human race. And it was that seed of the serpent which had corrupted mankind and caused their relationship with God, the Creator, to plunge to a debased level, both physically and spiritually. That was the original sin. All men today are traced back to the three sons of Noah for the inheritance of their acquired satanic traits. Appendices a4, Giants, Hebrew, Nephilim, Genesis chapter 6. A great many theologians propagate that the giants were the offspring of the union of the fallen angels and the women of the earth. It is taught that the fallen angels had either pressed themselves into some men or somehow transformed themselves into human beings in order to cohabit with the women. But none of the scriptures quoted to support this theory is conclusive enough to prove its validity. The term, sons of God, in the scriptures does not, in any way, refer to the angelic beings. Like the Trinitarians who use the one and only verse, Matthew chapter 28 verse 19, to support their theory and formula to baptize a convert in the triune title of Father, Son and Holy Spirit. So are these theologians using the one and only verse, Job chapter 1 verse 6, Job chapter 2 verse 1 is identical, to support the theory that the term, sons of God, refers to angelic beings. Many people have misinterpreted the verse and concluded that the angelic beings one day, suddenly, came and stood before the throne of God in heaven. It takes more than a casual reading to really understand Job chapter 1 verse 6, also Job chapter 2 verse 1. Confer Job chapter 38 verse 7. The event of Job chapter 1 verse 6, and Job chapter 2 verse 1, actually speaks of the saints of God coming together to offer themselves before the Lord. Most theologians teach that the flood was meant to destroy all the giants who, in their theory, were progenies of the fallen angelic beings by the natural women of the earth. And because of their sin in bringing forth giants into the world, those sexually perverted, Fallen angels were imprisoned by God and reserved unto judgment, Jude chapter 6, 2 pet.2, 4. Now, if this theory is true, how come there were giants after the flood? The term, sons of God, actually denotes the special relationship of man to God, as his children. And the Sethites were such a people. Furthermore, such terms as father, and son, do not only show the existence of a relationship but also the ability to procreate, be fruitful, and multiply. But the angelic beings were not created to procreate. Being spirits, they are always portrayed as men, never as women, and they are asexual, sexless, Mark chapter 12 verse 25. In the scriptures they are often called, stars, Job chapter 38 verse 7, Dan, 810, Reverend 116a, CF, 120, 812, 9 to 1. A5, no more physically pure serpent race after the flood. Some self-styled prophets are teaching that more than eight persons came out of the ark after the flood. Such wise preachers blatantly disregard the holy word of God and override it with their so-called revelation. Even though the family of Noah was in the ark for one year and ten days, General 711, 814, General 818 states very clearly that not more than the same eight souls, who went into the ark, came out of the ark onto dry land. While one teaching propagates that Mrs. Noah committed fornication with a caic man and was impregnated with his seed prior to entering the ark, another teaches that Noah had a second wife, hidden somewhere in the ark, who was impregnated by a caic man. Others teach that the wives of the three sons of Noah were impregnated by fornicating with caged men. Hence, by their revelation, they believe that a pure serpent race of people still exists today. Some of these preachers, which include those of the sect known as the white Christian people or the British Israelis, 
who believe they are the pure Adamic race point to the Negroid, or the Jews, as the pure seeds, descendants of the serpent, whereas the others let the winds blow ever which way. The scriptures of John chapter 8 verses 37 to 44 and Matthew chapter 13 verses 38 to 39 are used to support their teachings. However, in these passages of scriptures, the Lord Jesus was referring to the attitude of the religious Jews towards him and his doctrines. He was not saying that they were literal serpent seeds, like Cain, whose revelation was contrary to Abel's, who sought and killed Abel, the Jews, too, sought to kill the Lord Jesus. As foretold by God in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, these scriptures, John chapter 8 verses 37 to 44 and Matthew chapter 13 verses 38 to 39, speak of the enmity between the two seed lines, sometimes identified as the wheat and the tares. What was Jesus referring to when he said, I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. And also, in John chapter 8 verse 23, Ye are from beneath, I am from above, ye are of this world, I am not of this world. As he was speaking to his enemies, the religious and self-righteous Jews, it is obvious that he was pointing to that which he had learned and understood from his father, Yahweh, and that which the Jews had learned and understood from their father, Satan. Of course, whatever they had received from the adversary, who is the god of this evil world, was not only against the truth of God, but they also made themselves enemies of the Christ. Hence, the reference to them being the children of the wicked one, or, ye are of your father the devil. Remember, the serpent was not the wicked one, he was the instrument of the wicked one who vicariously fathered Cain. Notice the defense of those, children of the wicked one, in John chapter 8 verse 41. We be not born of fornication, we have one father, even God. This clearly tells us that the Jews knew about the fornication between Eve and the serpent that took place in the Garden of Eden, which resulted in the birth of Cain whose religious doctrine was a discrepancy to the true revelation of the word of God. Since then, in every age, the devil has his religious, serpent seed, people who would bring all sort of teachings contrary to God's truth. Such religious vipers, who have two hands, two feet, but no tail, as Jesus called them, existed not only in the time of the Old and New Testaments, but also in our time. They are largely found in and among the organized religion of Christianity, so-called. These religious snakes, with all their degrees in theology, which earned them fanciful titles such as Archbishop, Holy Reverend, Right Honorable, Cardinal, Very Reverend, and etc., are holding the truth in unrighteousness. For doctrines, they would teach the traditions of men, creeds and dogmas, beguiling the worshippers into committing spiritual fornication against the very word of God which they claim to believe. Jesus rebuked them saying, Dot for ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Matt.23, 15. See, such religious leaders of organized Christianity are producing children of hell, children of Satan, the devil, who are twice worse than they are. Do you not know that the devils believe in one God and that they tremble? Read James chapter 2 verse 19. There are many devils walking on two feet in this world, claiming to believe in the God of the Bible, but who tremble when they come face to face with the word of truth. They are deceivers, they perpetually hiss at the word of God with their poisons. In this way, the devil sought to deceive and to destroy the true sons of God in every age just as was prophesied by the Almighty God in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. However, Jesus promised that his elect will have no problem handling them and their poisons, Mark chapter 16 verse 18. A6, Genesis chapter 9 verses 18 to 27, the sin of Ham. For a long time, these few verses of scriptures have remained a mystery to many Bible students. As such, there are three different views concerning the sin of Ham. The two widely accepted views are, I, that Ham simply ogled at Noah's naked body, and made light of it to his brothers, and E, that Ham committed a homosexual act with his completely drunken father. Note, this author finds it extremely ridiculous to believe that it is a sin for a son to look at the naked body of his father, or perhaps, for a daughter to look at the naked body of her mother, unless there is lust in the mind. In the case of homosexuality, how could a man commit the act with another man who is dead drunk, not just drunk, and whose every member of the body is flaccid? If so, that would be a rape. There are other ridiculous views. One is that Ham castrated Noah while he was drunk. Another is that it was Canaan and not Ham that committed the sin against Noah. The least understood and generally rejected view is that Ham committed incest with his mother, Mrs. Noah. Yet, it is not only the true interpretation but it also shows the perfect continuity of the revelation of the doctrine of the original sin which is substantiated by the sinful nature of fallen man after the flood. Note, the author was once surprised by an exclamation made by a Bible student, who is against this teaching of incest and who believes that Ham had simply ogled at Noah's naked body. He gasped, what, let's be serious, how could you accuse the wife of a man of God, like Noah, of committing such an act of sin? Apparently, his knowledge of the Bible must have flown over his head. He must have thought that only wicked men and women commit sins. Just what has denominational teachings done to his mental faculty?
Sex seems to be a dirty three-letter word to many Christians like him. So they tame the cause of the fall of man and the sin of him with, it's an apple, or some fruit, and Ham ogled at his father's naked body and made light of it. However, the few who agree that the five verses refer to incest may still find it hard to reconcile certain verses with the whole passage. God has his mysterious ways of hiding his truth from the wise and prudent. One of his ways is the use of various particular expressions in the Bible, in Hebrew, Aramaic and Greek. He also uses the natural things to type the spiritual. If you realize this, you may then increase your understanding of strange sentences in the scriptures. So, look beyond the literal verses and read between the lines. Now, irrespective of what you believe, here are a few thought-provoking points for you to examine. May the Holy Spirit give you the grace to see the light. A. Consider the explicit statement, And Noah began to be a husbandman, and he planted a vineyard, and he drank of the wine. This affirms the curse that was to come upon Noah for indulging in winemaking and wine drinking. Gradually he became an alcoholic, and one day when he dot was drunken, one of his sons, uncovered, and saw his nakedness. And Ham, dot saw the nakedness of his father. The keyword to understanding this mystery is not nakedness, as many supposed, but uncovered. B. Read the laws as recorded in Leviticus chapter 18 and 20, and note the following words and phrases, uncover. Nakedness 18 to 6 minus 8, leave with, uncovered, nakedness 2011, and C. Nakedness 2017. Note, Moses was the author of both the book of Genesis and the book of Leviticus. The words and expressions he used in the two books do not differ, in the least, in their meanings. From the word uncovered, and the expression, saw the nakedness of his father, we can be very sure that Ham had lain with his father's wife. See, anyone who believes that Ham rightly warranted the curse on his son, Canaan, from his father simply because he happened to stumble upon Noah lying naked in his tent and then told his two brothers about the incident has an understanding that is worse than a mule's. Just read Genesis chapter 9 verse 24 carefully and you will see that it clearly shows that Ham had done something to Noah and not simply saw his naked body. He had brought shame to Noah when he lay with his mother, uncovering his father's nakedness. This caused Noah to curse Canaan. But why did Noah curse Canaan? Why not Ham's other sons? Does it justify Noah to curse Canaan if Canaan was the seed of Ham and his wife, Mrs. Ham? Should not Ham be the one cursed instead? For a curse to be justifiable, Noah should either have cursed Ham's eyes because he ogled at his naked body, or cursed his brain, mental faculty, for he made light of his drunken naked state. And if Ham had forced himself upon Noah when Noah was drunk, then a curse upon Ham's reproductive organ would be justified. Remember the word says, And if any mischief follow, then thou shalt give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burning for burning, wound for wound, stripe for stripe, exit point two one, twenty three to 25 So, why Canaan? God emphatically mentioned the name of Canaan in connection with Ham's sin in General 9.22, and Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father, and told his two brethren without, and in General 9.18, and the sons of Noah, that went forth of the ark, were Shem, and Ham, and Japheth, and Ham is the father of Canaan. God calls to our attention that Canaan was a seed produced out of that act of sin, uncovering. Dot saw the nakedness of his father, sin of an unholy union. Canaan was a seed not of Ham and his wife, Mrs. Ham, but of Ham and his mother, Mrs. Noah. The incestuous act brought forth that seed, Canaan, and Canaan brought forth giants, this side of the flood, General 10, 15 to 19. He was an accursed seed, just as Cain was a bad seed. Hence, Noah was justified in cursing Canaan. It could not be any plainer. This shows that Ham's sin was not something else, like making light of Noah's drunken naked state. Notice that Mrs. Noah did not bear any more children for Noah after her incestuous act with Ham which resulted in the birth of Canaan. It is obvious that Ham and his mother had committed incest while Noah was dead drunk and lying naked in his tent. Do not think that the illicit act was committed on the spur of the moment. The mother and the son must have been flirting with each other for some time before that. Note, it is recorded in ancient history that Ham's grandson, Nimrod, was just as perverted as Ham. He married his own mother, Samiramis. What was Noah's interest after the flood? See section A, above, and also read the various records of the scriptures to see what drunkenness can do to a person. Not only does it debase a person, it also brings him poverty, perverts his sense of justice, brings about debauchery, debility, disorder, and many other negative effects upon his life including his relationship with his wife. Not being a pure Sethite and having the nature of the serpent, Mrs. Noah began to step out of her marriage bond. No state of complete drunkenness that day provided her and Ham the opportunity to commit the shameful and sinful act. D. Verse 23 is the most difficult verse to reconcile with the whole passage of Genesis chapter 9 verses 20 to 24 regarding incest. Those who believe that Ham merely saw the naked body of his father would read the verse and say, See, Shem and Japheth took a garment to cover Noah, and in doing so, they walked backwards so that they would not see their father's naked body. 
If it is so easy to understand such expression of the scriptures as you do your 1 plus 2 plus 3, the world of Christianity would not be in such a mess as it is today. God has chosen mysterious ways to confound the wise and prudent, but he also reveals his truth in simplicity to babes and such that would learn. The Jews, who were God's chosen people, could not even grasp the truth of what the Lord Jesus was presenting to them when he said, in John chapter 6, that a man must eat of his flesh and drink of his blood in order to have life. They interpreted his words literally and thought that the Lord was encouraging them to be cannibals or vampires. On the other hand, the Roman Catholics take the Eucharist as the real flesh and blood of Jesus Christ. E. Let's examine verse 23, And Shem and Japheth took a garment, and laid it upon both their shoulders. Now, if you interpret this verse literally without regard to any hidden spiritual meaning behind it, you are then faced with this question. Why did Shem and Japheth take such a large and heavy piece of garment instead of one that was big enough and yet light, to cover their father's naked body? That piece of garment must really be a large and very heavy one, otherwise they would not have used both their shoulders to carry it. If you want to cover someone who is lying down, would you use, let's say, a piece of heavy rug which is six feet square, or a piece of ordinary cloth of the same size? F. Again, the verse says, a garment, and not a piece of large cloth. A garment is an attire for the covering of the body. The Aramaic translation of the word is mantle. So, how large and heavy could that garment be that it had to be carried on both shoulders of two men? Was it a clumsy garment worn by Noah or one of his sons? If not, then it must be just an ordinary piece of garment, a mantle. And, a garment of an ordinary size and weight on both the shoulders of two men walking backwards would mean that they had to position themselves shoulder to shoulder. And would not that be a very stupid way to do so? If Bible believers would only use their brains and think, there would not have been so many hee-haw preachers and believers around. G. When one realizes how God has used certain particular expressions to hide the truth and yet reveal it, it will not be difficult then to see the true picture of the truth. After having had carnal relation with his mother, Ham was not ashamed to tell his brothers about it. He was just like the adulterous woman who, after partaking of adultery, dared to boast and say that she had done no evil. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 20. He did not think of the shame that he would bring to his father who was at that time lying naked and dead drunk in his tent. Can you not see the woe that was upon Noah as a result of his indulgence in wine drinking? Shem and Japheth took a garment dot and went backward, and covered the nakedness of their father, and their faces were backward. This covering up was literal. The particular expression used here tells us that both the brothers were ashamed of what had happened. Their faces were backward when they were covering up the nakedness of their father. H. Check through the scriptures regarding the usage of the word garment and the expression upon the shoulders. You will notice that the garment, not just a piece of cloth, was a covering. The scriptures state that the brothers laid it upon both their shoulders. It means that they both took it upon themselves to bear the yoke and covered up the shame. But it was a responsibility that was hard to bear, for not long afterwards, Noah awoke from his wine, that is, after being long in a tousled state of mind Noah was enlightened to awareness, and found out what an evil thing that Ham had done to him. I. Dot, and they saw not their father's nakedness. This is an emphatic statement which shows that Shem and Japheth were not involved in any illicit affair with their mother when their father was under the curse of intoxicating drink. A7. Noah, the last of the pure Sethic firstborn. All the genealogical records in the Holy Scriptures are arranged in an orderly manner. God did not write his book indiscriminately. Notice Genesis chapter 5. It is called the Book of the Generations of Adam. In verse 3, it states that Adam begat a son in his own likeness, after his image, and called his name Seth. So, for a firstborn to be put on that record, he must be a direct descendant of Seth who bore the image and likeness of Adam. Only all the firstborn were recorded, and since the record ends with No's name, he must be the last of the pure Sethic firstborn, as his firstborn son and his other two sons were hybrids by his mixed marriage. Although Japheth was No's firstborn, he did not bear the likeness and image of Adam, therefore his name was not listed in the genealogy of Adam. Notice that his name is even placed after his two younger brothers, Shem and Ham, General 532. Hence, a different genealogy of each of the three sons of Noah was recorded. Note how the Holy Scriptures record it. These are the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth overspread, General 919. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And unto them were sons born after the flood, General 10 to 1. There is no record of a genealogy of Noah. Why? Because none of his sons bore his image and likeness of the Sethic race. And even if Japheth did, his name would be recorded in the genealogy of Adam. Notice that Noah's first son was born when he was 500 years old. The other firstborn, of the Adamic race, before him had theirs before they were 190 years old. Why was there this big gap in age? The reason is apparent when we realize that by the time Noah was born, the Kenites' influence upon the Sethites was so strong that all except Noah were drawn into the net of the Kenites' lifestyle. But Noah grew up to be a righteous man and he walked with God and was the only Sethite, among his people, who found grace in the eyes of God. 
By the time Noah was old enough to get a wife, he could not find a single Sethic woman, among the dwindling number, who was willing to live righteously and walk the way of Seth with him. The Kenites' way was more attractive to them as the light of a candle is to moths, or as the light of Hollywood is to some Christians today. The Bible tells us that the people of his generation was so corrupted and wicked that God had to destroy them. This era of great evil had begun from the generation of Enos, which saw the Caic race first profaning the name of Jehovah in their worship, Genesis chapter 4 verse 26. As the Sethites and the Kenites slowly began to mix and intermarry, hybrids were born. And such offspring of mixed marriages were generally more wicked and evil. This was one of Satan's many cunning schemes to destroy Adam's race. As time continued, God raised up Enoch to prophesy to his generation about the impending judgment of God upon their corruption and wickedness, Jude chapters 14 to 16. Gradually, the evil of men became so great that God had to call it to a halt in the generation of Noah, General 6 to 5, 11. Noah's own brothers and sisters, uncles and aunts, nephews and nieces, cousins and other relatives, also succumbed to the evil and wicked influence of Cain's people that they indulged themselves in idolatry, debauchery and other evil deeds. Although genetically they were pure Sethites, they were no longer righteous in the sight of God. They were fallen sons and daughters of God, for they had all gone the way of the serpent kind, the way of Cain. They had left the faith of their forefather Adam, hence, God was not obligated to take them into the ark. However, all the while, Noah continued to live and walk with God until he was almost 500 years old when he finally had to settle down and start a family in order to carry on his family name, so to speak. Now, in any race, there must be some God-fearing people. Without exception there must be some among the Kenites and some of the mixed seeds. If there was no Sethic woman who was willing to walk the way of Seth with him, Noah had to pick one from the other people who was willing to worship his God and follow the way of truth that his forefathers had done. Somehow that was the permissive will of God. Though Noah married a non-Sethic wife, he did not corrupt his life. He walked with God just as Enoch did. He kept himself away from all wickedness and evil which were so rampant. In the midst of moral darkness, Noah's life was radiant with righteousness. General 6 to 9, 7 to 1. Note, although it is not expressly stated in the Bible, Noah must have married Nama, a daughter of Caic Lamech, General 422. A woman's name is mentioned in a genealogy if she had a significant role in the history of mankind, cf. Matt.1, 5, 16. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God, General 6 to 9b. This verse tells us the kind of person that Noah was. No wonder, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, General 6 to 8. Please consult Strong's Concordance, 2580 for the word grace. Grace in Hebrew is chen, meaning graciousness, kindness, favor, pleasant, precious, well-favored, from 2603, chanin, to stoop in kindness to an inferior, to favor, bestow, to implore. Not only was he a just, righteous, man, but he was also perfect, and he walked with God. The word perfect, used in this verse is translated from the Hebrew word, tamim, which means, without blemish, in terms of breed or pedigree. Hence, the scriptures clearly show us that Noah was a pure breed, Sethites, and not a hybrid. However, because of his marriage to a Kenite or a hybrid woman, Noah could only have three sons. All Sethic firstborn before him had sons and daughters because all of them married Sethic women. This is due to two reasons. One, that intermarriage always results in genetic disturbances. Hence, Noah had sons and no daughter. Two, that it was a plan of God to bring about a new order through the judgment by the flood, that the three sons of Noah would be the progenitors of the human race, General 9:19. A8, literal seed of serpent, spiritual seed of Satan. Satan, of course, could not create nor procreate. However, he could impersonate and pervert whatever God has created. Cain was a serpent man. He was physically the son of the serpent, but he was vicariously the son of Satan. For instance, Paul called the man of sin, the son of perdition, to these. Two to three, Jesus called Judas Iscariot, a 